Hello and welcome. This is Americans Learn. You can ignore the uh, intro and the background. It is Americans Learn, but I've got a friend with me today. This is Jordan. And uh, he and I are going to watch a fat electrician video. Um, we will not have the Americans Learn background because when I try to have the Americans Learn background up with two people, it doesn't work. <laughs> so you get to experience the Chicago Reacts one instead. It's fine. Um, I like the flat, fat, a little, I can do words so great. I really like the fat electrician videos. Nick has taught me quite a lot. I really hope you enjoy this as well. Um, I think I might. I, I, I like war ducks. War ducks. Just war the ducks. ducks of war? Just the ducks of war. I'll the ducks, ducks of war, war is your fan? Yes. Your fan? You like that? <laughs> it's a whole category. <laughs> uh, agreed. All right. Well, here we go. This is probably the most Marine Corps story I've ever heard in my entire life. And there's absolutely no way that it's been embellished. Like a lot. <laughs> no Ladies way. Ladies and gentlemen, we've already talked about the Marine Corps' most famous animal hero, Sergeant Reckless. The horse that was adopted by yeah. the Marines during the Korean War that would go on to become the hero of Outpost Vegas and the first that was horse a fun video. ever taken a Marine Corps amphibious landing. But before Sergeant I did Reckless, like three the shots Corps during that video. From the animal kingdom that partook in multiple amphibious landings in the Pacific Theater of World War II. Today we're talking about Sergeant Seawash, a.k.a. the Devil Duck. But first, a word from our sponsor. Sergeant this video is brought to you by Delete Sergeant Seawash. That's so good. Service. It's a very straightforward, simple Ooh. business. You give them money, they get rid of your personal information off the internet. Okay, look, here's the deal. Somehow, mm. some way, your personal information is on the internet. Your name, your spouse's name. Somehow, some way, you mean you did a Google search once. <laughs> you sign up for anything. Uh-huh. You buy anything. You, you have utilities. Do you, you have Amazon? Somewhere. Do you have a subscription <laughs> to, like... Disney Plus, guess what? They've got all of your information forever. You were registered at birth. No. <laughs> I mean, these days, yeah. yeah. I mean, think about all the TikTok mommies that are like putting their kids out there on the internet for all the world to see forever. They be registered at birth. Yeah, I actually really, I, I really need to do this. Let's just do that. Just delete me. This sounds like, I mean, the link is going to be in the description box in his video, which will be in the, our description box below. Your name, your address, your last five addresses, your phone numbers, and all of your emails are all sitting in some data broker's bank, and they're selling that information for money. But the good news yes, is that are. these data brokers are legally required to delete your information if you submit an opt-out request. And that's where Delete Me comes in. They will go to all the big data brokers and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf, and you don't have to do anything. And I know what you're thinking, because I thought the same thing. I don't want to give all my personal information to delete me either because that just seems counterproductive. Okay, here's the thing with that. You don't have to give them all your private information. You can literally give them your name and your email address. You can give them more information if you want, but really all they need is your name and email. And then you come back a few days later and they just start asking you a bunch of yes or no questions. By using just your name and email, they'll search through all the data banks and figure out who you are. And they'll ask you a bunch of weird questions like, Scary. is this your dad? Is this your mom? Is that a relative? Is this your address? Did you used to live here? Did you grow up at this address? Is this your phone number? Number. Is this your email? They know all of this information just by you giving them your name and email using all the information that these data brokers have. And then you just let them know, yes, that's me. And then they will delete all that information for you. A couple days after that, they're going to send you a report. Here was mine. Over 70 data brokers had my information and there were 489 listings where that information was for sale and delete. Oh my God. Opt out requests for all of them. Now those data brokers are probably going to be able to get my information again, but delete me is constantly going to be searching for my info and automatically submitting the requests as soon as those hmm. listings pop up. Go check out Delete Me. I'll have a link and a discount code down below. Let's get back to the video. Our story begins in 1942 as the 2nd Marine Division is currently in New Zealand gearing up to go into combat against the Japanese in World War II. And like all great military stories that totally happened, it begins in a bar with a bunch of Marines. It has, it has all great military stories that totally happened totally for sure. Happened. <laughs> drinking. And as it's traditional, and everything just starts in a bar. In a bar. There are That's always reports good. reports as to what actually happened. According to the Marine Corps, the Marines went out to a local bar in New Zealand. They then started drinking with the locals and they all had a great, very professional, cordial time where they all drank a very appropriate amount of alcohol, potentially even a Surgeon General recommended amount. And then none of the Marines went out and hooked up with any of the local women. And if they no. did, hypothetically, which they didn't, but if they did, it would have been strictly in the missionary position and the Marines would have used protection. Now, while they were at the bar, there was also a raffle. <laughs> And apparently a bunch of the Marines bought these tickets for this raffle. And one of the Marines by the name of Sergeant Francis Fagan ended up winning the raffle. Now, the grand prize for this raffle at a bar in New Zealand was apparently a duck. 
and that's what the Marine Corps says happened. Now, according to the other sources, mostly the personal accounts of the Marines that were actually there, and quite frankly, common sense, says that the Marines were at this local bar partying their faces off like they were about to go into the biggest armed conflict the world has ever seen. And while Imagine that. Some of the Marines were playing poker with the locals, and the Marines apparently took all of their money, and they came back to the table, and they're like, all right, well, here's my prize duck. I'm going to put that up as a wager. And the Marine Corps ended up winning that too, and that, again, was Sergeant Francis Fagan, a.k.a. Pappy. Now, personally, I'm okay. going to go ahead and err on the side of the Marines got hammered at a bar and won a duck in a poker game, and the chain of command didn't want to get in trouble for associating the Marine Corps with gambling, so they just made uh -huh. up some weird that, shit, like apparently... Uh, but it's a raffle. raffle! off ducks, but... It's a raffle, and they yeah. won a duck in that raffle. It was a raffle, a duck raffle, The yeah. Marines drank a nor... The Marines drank a normal amount of alcohol. Just, yeah, a drink an hour. Just <laughs> A single beer, <laughs> a single beer in an hour, <laughs> and, and they had water right after, and, <laughs> and it was a very calm raffle. It might as well have been like from a scene from My Fair Lady. How calm this raffle! Silent auction. It was a mm -hmm. it was a silent auction, is what it was. I've been here for three hours and I've had two white claws. <laughs> <laughs> you can go ahead and decide to believe whatever you want. Regardless, either way, Francis Fagan, and by extension, the Marine Corps now has a duck. So what are the Marines gonna do with a duck? Obviously, they take it under their wing. I'd like to apologize to the internet for making you a dad. I mean. Huh? That's his wife. To be fair, that is true. I kind of <laughs> turned her into a bodyguard. It, it, it is like her fault. months between the two kids. Wow. <laughs> Interrupting my- Oh, story. I get it. A <laughs> Bodybuilder. <laughs> That took me a second. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> she builds bodies. She there builds you. bodies. There you go. There you go. Does that if so if a mom is a bodybuilder by by the transitive property, she's also Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And the kid all kids are little monsters, so it makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And we grow into even bigger monsters. It sounds so much fun. But now I just want to enter pregnant women into bodybuilding competitions well, and like, argue when they say I women. am <laughs> building one as we speak. Just like look at this. I'm building it's getting built. And it's just like, how can you argue with it? When that? I'm done, I'll have a whole body. Yeah. What are you gonna have? An extra muscle? There you go. A little bit of a bicep there. No, Created no. a bunch of body. <laughs> <laughs> so much body. <laughs> About that. Anyways, the Marines pretty much immediately teach this duck how to drink beer, which I know what you're thinking. That's probably not very healthy for the duck, but to be fair, they drink a normal amount of spices alcohol. to have. I mean, he could get addicted to quack. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay, I'm done with the dad jokes. That joke Are is you? foul. Anyways, they become drinking buddies with this duck. He becomes one of the Marines, and then time comes for them to all go off to war and actually engage with the Japanese. Sure enough, they take the duck with them. Fast forward, November 1943, the Battle of Tarawa. It's one of the bloodiest battles in Marine Corps history. Essentially, the Japanese have 4,000 soldiers dug in and heavily fortified on the Tarawa Atoll, and the Marines have to go in there and take them out. Now, what's unique about Tarawa is it is surrounded by coral reefs, and what that means is any traditional landing craft that America could use, like a Higgins boat, similar to what we used over in the European theater would get hung up on these coral reefs and mm -hmm. the Japanese would be able to spray it with machine gun fire and artillery and mortars and kill absolutely everybody. The Japanese were so confident in these coral reefs and their fortified defenses that Admiral Shimasaki said that it would take a million men a hundred years to take Tarawa. But he didn't know wow. that the Marine Corps had the LVT, the Landing Vehicle Tracked, aka the Amphibious Tractor. Similar to a Higgins boat except it had tracks on it and then oh, when it cool. hit the coral reefs it would simply drive right over the top of them. So November Aww, Coral reefs. 43 at 3 a.m. under the cover of darkness, 18,000 Marines and one duck would load into their salamander tractors as they prepared to launch one the amphibious duck. landing at the quack of dawn. As dawn broke, the Japanese soldiers watched in horror as the American landing crafts did not get hung up on the reefs, but simply drove right over the top of them. The only surviving Japanese officer from this battle, Kiyoshi Ota, would later go on to write, We could see the American landing craft coming towards us like dozens of spiders over the surface of Oof. the water, as one of my men exclaimed, the gods of death have come. As the Marines reached the beach, Aww. they would become penned down from heavy machine gun, artillery, and mortar fire. They were only able to secure the first 70 yards of the beach after hours of combat. It is at this Yikes. point that the Marines' front line was charged 
by an enemy rooster, and Sergeant Seawash charged past the marine line to meet the chicken in winged combat in the middle of the battlefield. After sustaining several pecks to the head, Seawash was able to repel the enemy ambush and save his fellow marines. The marines would then go on in the following days to from a rooster the island. The Japanese believed that it would take a million men a hundred years. In reality, it took 18,000 marines and one devil duck 72 hours. For sustaining multiple peck wounds on the battlefield, the marines tried to get Seawash the purple heart. Unfortunately, that wasn't going to work out, but the chain of command still cited Seawash for bravery on the battlefield. That citation, written by Lieutenant Colonel Presley M. Brexley, is as follows. For courageous action and wounds received on Farwell in the Gilbert Islands, November 1943, with utter disregard for his own personal safety, Seawash, upon reaching the beach without hesitation, engaged the enemy in fierce combat, namely one rooster of Japanese ancestry, and though wounded on the head by repeated pecks, he soon routed his opposition. He then refused used medical aid until all wounded members of his section had been taken the, care of. The animals, oh my have, God. the animals have human ethnicities now. I love this. <laughs> One rooster of Japanese, Japanese ancestry. ancestry. <laughs> That's fun. I mean, what? like, look, you got to make it sound professional and legitimate. And I appreciate that. And it's like, you know what? Yeah. Give the duck a freaking medal. Sure. That's uh, you know they should have given the duck the they should have given that the purple, duck heart. The yeah. that purple heart yeah that purple heart it's like yeah. yeah he saved his fellow marines from being pecked by a rooster who was there for some reason also that's my that's <laughs> so that's the part that I'm like <laughs> this also you just happen to also they have a also rooster, have a bird and what? you happen to bring a duck like <laughs> <laughs> you just happen to bring a duck that you won in a raffle I mean maybe it was gonna be for food later. It's very possible. And like, were they camping out on this island for a while? They were like, well, we got to, we got to have some kind of meat. Maybe it was their alarm. Maybe it was their alarm. Maybe it was We got to make alarm. sure that we wake up in time to, to see the Americans climbing like spiders over the water. Yeah. I mean, you want to see that before it happens so that you can hear the guy exclaim. About the gods of death? <laughs> yes. That's like a part of the, it's a part of the script for mm -hmm. human destiny. Mm-hmm. And we knew. Seawash and his fellow Marines would then see battle again at the Battle of Saipan, also known as the D-Day of the Pacific. However, allegedly due to some intel, there would be no enemy poultry on the beach, so Seawash's services were no longer needed, and he would remain <laughs> on the boat for the initial three days of the battle. After that, he would go ashore and support his fellow Marines. At the conclusion of the Battle of He's Saipan, their emotional the support would gain valuable intel wow. regarding the neighboring island of Tinian, and they would immediately launch another attack to gain that island as well, and this time, the Devil Duck would partake in the end amphibious landing. From there, he would identify an enemy duck that he would engage in build combat until forcing it to finally retreat. A couple of days after that, the Marines would take the island entirely, and shortly after that, Sergeant Seawash would lay an egg. Apparently, Seawash and the other duck I mentioned a minute ago were doing a little bit more than just fighting. Either way, <laughs> realize that Sergeant Seawash is in fact a girl, to which they're like, a woman. <laughs> a treacherous thing. Didn't care. In reality, they're probably giving each other a hard time, like, all right, who did it? Pass up. <laughs> Tania would be the last time that Sergeant Seawash ever saw combat. After World War II, she would end up getting sent back home to America with her fellow Marines and her primary caretaker, Francis Fagan. From there, the story of Sergeant Seawash picked up traction, being in Time Magazine, having multiple radio appearances, being in a bunch of different newspapers, telling the harrowing story of America's one and only devil duck. And while all that's going on, she is partying her bill off with her Marines, drinking beer after beer, while <laughs> nice. also helping the Marines hit on young women. And I actually believe this to be the- Oh, that definitely- for sure. Yeah. Oh my God. You Ultimate. have a duck. Oh Wing my God. Man. Oh no. Oh <laughs> no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I hate. I hate. Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> it just came out. That was good. That was. I mean. Technically, well, yes, technically, yeah. I was just going to be like, that would work. You have a bunch of people, they've got a duck. You're going to go and say hi because, like, there's a duck. Literally the ultimate wingman. The ultimate wingman. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you. See, I can't get up and walk away. I'm trapped in a corner right now. I have to go past him to leave. And I, I, I'm not embarrassed enough to get up. <laughs> just enough to be on the edge of my seat. 
term <laughs> wingman being used in relation to picking up women. There it yeah, is. I mean, look at this. There it is. He said it too. More game than an you got there first. Man's about to get more <laughs> than an animal shelter. Over the next couple months, the publicity would die down and Francis Fagan would go on to become an electrician. And his great grandson would also go on to become an electrician that had a pretty decent sized YouTube channel. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not related to this guy. Damn it. Anyways. Uh, Damn so it. Wash would also then go to live on a farm for an extended period of time until being called back into duty during the Korean War where she helped with recruiting efforts. After that, she would finally retire to live okay. out the rest of her days in the Lincoln Park. Better than going to high schools and trying to poach people straight from the cafeteria at lunchtime. Yeah, that happened to me. Yeah, I was it's in like, It happened now. That's what they do now. But it was just like at the time, it's like, no, bring a duck. Yeah, a duck. If you fight, you might get a duck out of it. Like that's. Whoa. <laughs> Zoo in Chicago before passing away in 1953 due to liver complications, which prompted the Marines to release a statement saying that there is no reason to believe that her liver complications were due to her <laughs> excessive amount of drinking during her time in service. According to multiple newspapers, her funeral service was then held in a taxidermy shop where she was then stuffed and currently resides in the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Triangle, Virginia. So in conclusion, this has been the totally real, 100% okay. not embellished whatsoever nope. story of Sergeant C. Wash, AKA America's Devil Duck. That time the Marine Corps won a duck in a poker game, taught it how to drink beer, then took it to multiple amphibious landings in the deadliest battles of World War II, <laughs> kept it alive the entire time to bring it back home so they could use it to hit on women. And I think it is the most Marine Corps thing that has ever happened. And if I'm wrong, you can tell me down below. And if your story is better, I'll do a video on that too thank you for watching best way to and, the and a go picture by of fatelectrician.com quack bang out i mean that is a very marine core story <laughs> i'm sorry but the last picture is literally the duck drinking more beer yeah <laughs> no way connected to all that it's alcohol. in no way connected to the liver poisoning that it had at the end Nothing to do with drinking all of the beer as a duck wow, we with a tiny liver. We humans are affecting the animals. They have ethnicity now. They get alcohol-related disease. Mm -hmm. The whales are having sex. No, I'm just not. <laughs> the whales are having... long story. <laughs> they, they finally caught two humpback whales having sex. Oh. And they were two male whales. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Good job. There's a, they're gay. The whales are gay. <laughs> okay. Hump back whales. Hump back we whales. Did it. It's in the name. I mean, we called them that, and then we were like, they were like, okay, <laughs> sure. Is this who you want me to be? I will do. <laughs> that, that is fine. I will do. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all learned something. <laughs> we did. Wingman. Bye.